Hi everybody, this is Brenda. This video is the first extension of my video titled AOC's Green New Deal is Agenda 21. And before I get into this, let's remember that the ruling entities of this world are not like us. They do nothing with our well-being in mind, but their goal is a universal government and the head of this entity is Satan himself. This is all being orchestrated by his own family members. And just as we live through our Savior, Jesus Christ, they live through their Savior, Satan. And 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I really believe this anti-beef and, and um, anti-rancher and all that isn't the bottom of this. What they really want to do is they want to tax them out of business. Um, they're going to have to sell their lands. And part of Agenda 21, which I'll bring up in another video too, but it is um, for foreign people or foreign entities to buy land in other countries so the actual citizens of those countries don't own land and they won't be able to get it back um so they're you know they want they want the land they don't want us to have the land and this is this is also part of that and um yeah but here's some of the propaganda they're using. The biggest beef is with beef. Beef is extremely inefficient to produce as cattle consume a huge amount of calories and protein in order to produce a relatively small amount of calories and protein for human consumption. Sheep and goat are similarly inefficient converters of feed to food, but are eaten on a much smaller scale globally. As a result, Beef production requires large quantities of land and water per unit of protein or calorie consumed. They say one quarter of the Earth's land, excluding Antarctica, that's their home where all the lizards live, excluding Antarctica is used as pasture land and beef accounts for one third of the global water footprint of farm animal production. Beef also has a, a disproportionate impact on climate change. Ruminants, of which cattle are the most common, that's like chewing their cud, they call it ruminants, accounted for nearly half of all agricultural production-related greenhouse gas emissions in 2010. Because now they came out and said that it wasn't the cows, you know, farting, but it's really their burps. That's what's that's what's causing this greenhouse gas. If cattle were able to form their own nation, they would rank third behind China in the United States among the world's largest greenhouse gas emitters. Here's my thought on that. <laughs> and then they gave us a map. If cattle were their own nation, they would be the world's third largest GHG emitter. Beef uses 33% of all water for farm animal production. Like water's not cyclical. 25% of Earth's land area is pasture land, excluding Antarctica, their favorite place. And now there's, they're saying that beef demand is projected to grow by 95% by 2030. 
by 2050. I bet by 2050, after they cut cut all the the beef out of our diets, yeah, people are going to be demanding it. And the 5% that aren't, they probably, who knows? They don't, who knows about the 5% that aren't? That must be them. But they say you don't have to become a vegetarian or vegan to make a difference. The average American could cut their diet-related environmental impacts by nearly one half just by eating less meat and dairy. AOC clarified this on Showtime's, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but she says, it's not to say you get rid of agriculture. It's not to say we're going to force everybody to go vegan or anything crazy like that, she said. But it's to say, listen, we got to address factory farming. Maybe we shouldn't be eating a hamburger for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, okay, factory farming, they don't use all that pasture land. But on the other hand, they're saying that what was it, 33% of our land is pasture land? So, they're kind of talking out both sides of their mouth on this issue. It sounds something like the health insurance, doesn't it? Well, taxes always work, right? The technocrats called on the U.S. to establish a carbon tax and dividend program in which the tax on carbon would increase every year until emissions reduction goals are met. Um, transform our bodies and minds by choosing an inspiring diet. And I think they want us, if you are what you eat, they want us to all become vegetables. No, I don't want to be a vegetable. But they really want to transform people's minds. And it is really working on a lot of people. It's very scary. Very scary. I've talked to people in their 20s. and They, it's literally like they are they have a recording of alexandria ocasio cortez and they open their mouth and it comes out and there's no reasoning with them they're totally warped totally brainwashed but wait till you see what they have in mind here with what with food with what they want us to eat okay this <laughs> is it's creepy before we get into the really creepy stuff um here's something else could americans see a carbon tax on meat what about policies against feedlots and other large-scale beef operations or what about incentives to eat less beef and more poultry and pork? Pro-vegetarian tax credits? So, is this sounding like that, that social, what is it, they have in China? I forget what it's called, but you know what I mean. Okay, here we go with what they plan on doing. USDA could also direct its research into cell-based meat and other next-gen meat alternatives. This could lower the cost of high-quality beef alternatives and reduce meat consumption through market forces. And look how this goes directly against God. And then here's what God said we could eat. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, 
that shall ye eat. And cows are definitely one of those animals, along with a few others, like deer and, um, you know, the, I think goats and prop, yeah, and sheep, but they're just interested in, in this, in the cattle. And I think it's so weird too that how they got rid of really all the buffalo. Like, what is it with this red meat that they don't want us eating it? Listen to this. Global average per person protein consumption exceeded dietary requirements of all regions in 2009, with each person consuming on average about 68 grams per day, one third higher than the average daily adult requirement. Like, they're literally going to ration out fake meat to us. And, of course, vegetables. In wealthy countries, protein consumption was higher still. For example, let's, let's get on the Americans again. The average American man eats nearly 100 grams of protein per day, almost double the amount of protein he needs. How do these people know? And who cares? They're paying for it. You know? And we need protein and you can't get that kind of protein in plants or beans or fake soy products you just can't okay see this little like place setting thing read it sustainable food lab they want us eating uh, non-food food here, take a look at this. Maximizing food impact and health. Food is increasingly associated with the world of health, from probiotic beverages to functional food, edible solutions that help prevent or cure various pathologies are quickly emerging. It is called bioinformatics trend, and the goal is to unlock food sources, providing natural, sustainable, and scientifically proven health solutions. Neratus, Neratus, is that what that is? Neratus is doing that in Ireland using artificial intelligence and DNA analysis. Chloe Retzerald's Digestive Food Project designs food in service of the digestive system using digital fabrication. The design of a new food system plays a crucial role in minimizing food consumption while maximizing its nutrient injection. And this stuff is scary. They're really working on this. You gotta pass the word on. We gotta do something. Okay, different from robotics-based food, manufacturing technologies, which are designed to automate manual process for mass production, 3D food printing integrates technology and digital gastronomy techniques to manufacture completely customized food products. This introduces countless opportunities from streamlining cooking activities like what Natural Machines is doing with Foodini, the 3D food printer, to producing new shapes impossible without these techniques, like what TNO is doing with pasta, to leveraging precision nutritional opportunities. Look at that India banned beef. India's ban on beef leads to murder and Hindu-Muslim friction. Like, wow, they're really worried about us, aren't they? So, yeah, so the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, again, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe in the truth. Okay, I found this in Global Citizen online, and this was really... Are they wanting us to eat the grain that's not digested out of the cattle? Or am I reading this wrong? Because you know how they double talk. Okay, livestock's waste can be used for fertilizer that can help grow crops, yes. And that's the way it should be, right? But then listen. Most livestock feed is made up of waste products like spent grain. So raising livestock can create extra calories for humans to consume that wouldn't have existed otherwise. Does that mean they want us to eat the spent grain and the waste products? What? <laughs> I don't know. And then under here, if you read it, but these benefits come with a major something. Moderation. Eating meat on a daily basis can never be sustainable. I mean, people's been eating meat forever all around the world. But then my next video will get into um, what the vegetarian and vegan diet does to a person's body and how it a lot of the spiritual um like religions like the, the spiritualism the new age and stuff and um the vegan diet and vegetarian diet are connected and how it's all connected still to the new world order but thanks a lot thanks a lot i hope you you spread the news about how they're going to try to feed us like food made out of a printer a 3d printer and this is really crazy stuff and um yeah, it's like I've been up all night, so I'm going to go get some sleep. <laughs> but I hope you all have a great day. And don't forget to pray for the children, the innocent, the lost, and pray for the prisoners. I've, I've been trying to come up with something to help the prisoners and their spouses and their children um i'll tell you a story one of these days okay have a great day love you guys bye bye